It's really great to see so many people here, and I now have the great pleasure of introducing our guest speaker for the evening, Dr. Sanera Tabani. Dr. Tabani is a noted professor of women and gender studies at the University of British Columbia, and prior to her position at UBC, she was the Ruth Wynn Woodward Endowed Professor at Women's Studies at Simon Fraser University. She's also been a visiting scholar at the University of Victoria, at Queen's University in Kingston, and she's published numerous journal articles and spoken at dozens of conferences. Her 2007 book, Exalted Subjects, Studies in the Making of Race and Nation in Canada, was an exceptional look at race and nationhood. And her research included, in, continues to include issues such as violence against women, the impact of globalization on women's citizenship, and the representation of women in the media, and also uh, of women and, uh, and the war on terror. You can tell from her interests, Dr. Tavani is much more than a scholar. She's also been actively engaged in social justice, race, and feminism for many years. Her extensive community work includes serving as the president of the National Action Committee Coalition on the Status of Women, NAC, as we refer to it, where she was committed to making the politics of anti-racism central to the women's movement. She helped organize against the opening of sex selection uh, clinics in British Columbia, was a founding member of SAWAN, the South Asian Women's Network, and since her appointment at UBC, Dr. Tabani has been committed to using an interdisciplinary approach in her teaching and research and maintaining her involvement in community and social justice issues. This is only a little bit of the biography of Dr. Sanera Tabani. She's a very busy and very active person. She's been tireless and outspoken about her views even in the face of some vicious hate speech complaints and public bullying. And we are thrilled that she was generous with her time, generous enough to be here at Media Democracy Day. Dr. Sanera Tabani. We all know that the media has been central to governance and that the corporatization and globalization of media in the past few decades particularly has made media powerful to an unprecedented degree. Media scholars, of course, and including those from the communications program at uh, Simon Fraser University, and also the School of Journalism at UBC, have noted that the media shape in very significant ways the common sense understandings that people come to acquire about the nature of the social world and about major national and international events and their consequences. So, Robert Hackett and Lindsay Zhao, for example, from SFU point out, and I want to quote, journalism is arguably the most important form of public knowledge in contemporary society. End of quote. At the best of times, most people rely heavily on the media for their understanding of current events, and this is particularly so with regard to international events which many people experience as far away and distant from them. With few other options available for public dissemination of information about such events, the media have, in many ways, become the only public space for such discussion and debate. In moments of global crisis, this reliance becomes even more acute as we seek to acquire information about rapidly unfolding events. And more importantly, about national and international interests, alliances, and enmities. Media is thus the primary site for the dissemination of hegemonic discourses, of ruling ideologies, but at the same time, and as the, as the media democratization movement seeks to ensure, it is also the site of contestation, negotiation, and adaptation of these ruling ideologies. As we also all no doubt recognize, it is vital to transform the role media plays in the present moment. A moment of profound challenges, revolutionary transformation, and far-reaching changes to the organization of power relations within the global order. Yet, ironically, at the very moment that media reporting became absolutely indispensable in the global 
global crisis that the war on terror has precipitated, the utter collapse of even the flimsiest of claims to objectivity was revealed in North American mainstream media. Expressions of support for the pro-war rhetoric emanating from the US administration and also from the Canadian government, the British government at that time, became not only a measure for the patriotism of journalists and other media workers, but also proof of their opposition to terrorism and to what was very crudely defined as evil. Critics of the war on terror were initially attacked as being un-American in the US. In Canada, we were accused of being un-Canadian. Those who did not march in step with the drumbeat of war were publicly reviled as apologists for terrorists. Their perspectives quickly marginalized when not entirely silenced. In this environment, a significant change in news reporting was identified by media scholars. There was, and I want to quote, a critical culture shift in the dominant news frame used by American mass media for understanding issues of national security, altering perceptions of risk at home and threats abroad, such that while the actual dangers from international terrorism had fallen substantially around the world, and indeed fallen during the last decade, this was the first decade of the 21st century, perceptions and dangers of such attacks had actually increased. And this was the finding of Norris Kern and Just in a study that they did of news reporting, particularly on the question of terror. This state of affairs was not confined to the US, and unfortunately, I would argue, was not confined to the mainstream media only. If allegiance to the state became a hallmark of national belonging, of commitment to democracy, and indeed, ridiculously enough, belonging to civilized human community, that is the Western community, if this were hallmarks in the mainstream media, the wholesale condemnation of Islam as patriarchal and violent, and the wholesale denunciation of Muslims as misogynist and fanatic, of Muslim women as dupes of Muslim men, became the hallmark of belonging to the progressive activist communities that shaped the politics of the media democratization movement. In Canada, the mainstream media responded to the US-led war on terror by presenting Canada is also a likely target for terrorist attacks like the US, because Canada, they told us, was part of the West and hence committed to democracy and freedom. The Canadian media thus helped transform what was basically an attack on the United States with a very specific political set of demands related to US foreign policy into an existential religious racial crisis in the global order. Islam and the Muslim world, as we see in the media every day today, became constructed as an irrational enemy of the entire West and its civilization, fueled only by hatred and envy. In other words, the Canadian and other Western media depoliticized and internationalized the 9-11 attacks. Unsurprisingly then, media scholars like T.Y. Ishmael and J. Mazur found in their study of Canadian media reporting what they defined as sensational, emotional, and repetitive reporting and misrepresentation. 